la- last week, the topic of the podcast was traders in our midst. And and independent of that, and, and it had to have been going on already. It couldn't have been inspired by the podcast because the, I looked at the some of the work this person did, and it's, it's some nice scripting. Um, a, a security researcher uh, who calls him stock self stack overflowing with no G stack overflowing uh, wrote a script to scan the Internet for printers publicly exposing their IPP, which we discussed last week, Internet Printing Protocol, LPD, the line printer day port or port 9100. Just scan the net. Um, now, there was, again, misreporting as a consequence of of people taking literally sort of his joke, like what he had printers print. But in the last week, I've received a bunch of tweets from people. There, There's also a fun one, Leo. There's a link. I didn't turn it into a link. It, it, it's a Twitter picture below that first picture from uh, Priscilla. She tweeted, the printer... For our POS, and I'm assuming that in this case she means point of sale. <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, Not piece of uh, yes. Uh, systems at work got hacked, and she says LMAO, and then she she posted a tweet, which is actually actually shows a a you know a strip of point of sale paper. Yes, carbon with, paper too. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. With, with this thing with this thing, and so it says it says read. Stack overflowing, the hacker god has returned. Your printer is part of a flaming botnet operating on Putin's forehead, <laughs> utilizing BTI's Pred's break the internet complex infrastructure. Okay, none of that is true, but he was just having fun. And so one of them shows a, I don't know, a terminal and then a computer. And then it says, and the screen says, hacked, hacked, LOL, just kidding. And that was one of the messages that he had 150,000 printers around the globe print. And then on the set, on the next page of the show notes is a different message where he did a, an ASCII art bot and basically said the same sort of thing. So, um, okay, so first of all, there was no botnet. Nothing was technically pwned or owned, but... What, what was surprising, although it shouldn't have been from our reporting last week, is that 150,000 printers are publicly exposed, including this POS system. It's like, why, why, why would you have your port exposed? And then I, and I thought about it. And I thought, okay, you know, there's a takeaway for our listeners. Because our advice, Leo, yours and mine, for more than a decade, we can say that now because we're in year 12 of the podcast, disable universal plug and play. That has been our mantra because that universal plug and play is a now a widely used interface on the LAN side of of routers, which is enabled by default because they want to be helpful and they don't want tech support calls and everybody else does it. So why shouldn't they? It allows any device on your LAN to make itself public. That's, that's arguably what it was for. Now, Microsoft gets away with this. This was their standard because they've also got a firewall in the PC. So they're able to, to be a little more careful in using universal plug and play. But, this, but so, so uh, people understand, you can log into your router and you can deliberately map ports inside that is you're able to to essentially bypass the router's network address translation 
firewall, stateful firewall, meaning, and we've talked about this often, that unsolicited packets are ignored. It's only packets returning from an initial outbound connection, which are automatically allowed back in and are then routed to the originally the original sending machine. But there are some things like Skype, for example, back in the peer-to-peer days of Skype uh, and, and g- gaming, where in order to be on a gaming network, they, they're greedy with the ports. They need, there's like four or five ports you need to have opened. And so because that was too hard, I mean, and, and arguably, I mean, I'm not saying it isn't, it, it's, it's a problem that, that – where convenience and security are colliding because on one hand your xbox wants to have some ports exposed that we're trusting it to handle responsibly so it uses universal plug and play to open those ports behind our back that is the router has it it's enabled by default any device, there's no security. That was the controversial feature of universal plug and play because again, they opted for ease. There is no security on it. So so a device on your network needs no permission to talk to your router and say, and in this case, we're talking about a printer. This this has to be how 150,000 ports are open. Printers, are trying to be helpful. They're saying, oh, what if you're roaming and you want to print to me from out on the public internet? Well, if you're going to do that, I have to make a port open. So when you connect your printer in your LAN, it reaches out to the router and opens ports behind your back, exposing it to the internet, which is where 150,000 of these ports came from most of them probably unintended so so here's a, here's a, again so we so we've had an example of the number of printers that are probably exposed and the fact and and mechanism by which printers are able to make themselves public without their owners knowing it um, one thing you can do because we know what these ports are the ports for the the port for the internet printing protocol IPP is is TCP 631 for LPD is TCP 515 and for the raw protocol is port 9100 now because those are not and I'm I'm as I'm saying this I'm thinking well that this time maybe to to revisit this because these are not your typical widely used service ports like FTP and SSH and web and so forth, they're not in GRC's shields up small port list. They are on the service port list, so except for 9100 because I go up to, to a little bit above 1024, but not up to 9100. So if you did a full service port scan, Look to see if 631 and 515 are showing as open, in which case something in your network, probably without your permission or knowledge, has opened those ports and is listening to. Of course, maybe you already got the robot ASCII art (laughs) a couple days ago, and so you know that somebody somehow got into your printer. The point is that this was just – they just used it as a printer – this time but this is a a nice heads up saying okay you got your warning shot um your printer's exposed and we know from what we talked about last week from the research that was done that because for example postscript is a full touring uh qualified language that is able to execute code uh, you just don't want your printer exposed. It creates an opportunity for someone to get into your network, onto your LAN with a with a computer, because of course com- printers are computers. Is it sufficient so, to turn off UPnP? Um, I would say turn off UPnP and reboot. 
Um, you could check from you know the, the advantage that any port scanner like Shields Up provides is it's got an a public facing uh, view. You really can't see what's going on inside your network because there's just so much going on. What matters is what's exposed to the public, and so um, you know Shields Up will by by looking back at your IP address will give you a warning if if anything that you're not expecting is exposed. And so it's worth, you know, it's worth doing a little shields up scan every few months just to make sure that nothing you've added, none of the IoT devices has gotten up to any mischief.